Okay, so another session class for us to learn more about research proposal writing. And uh, I am now presenting to you a sample uh, research proposal of mine. I think it, this may not be the perfect uh, proposal for presentation, but it's just a matter for uh, instructional use. Okay, at least you will be given an idea. Okay, so let us proceed. First, we must have the research title. So this is my proposed title. And at the same time, you have to indicate that it is an undergraduate research proposal and it is in fulfillment of your requirements for our subject criminological research. So after that, you have to indicate the proponents or the researchers. So this is mine, so I have indicated my name, but in your uh, group, indicate all the members. Then do not forget to indicate the name of your selected advisor. So yes, it is very important to take note also of the year and uh, month of uh, defense. Okay, so there is no date that was provided since we have not indicated the specific date for your proposal. So it would just be okay that it would look like this. Then uh, we proceed uh, automatically with uh, chapter one, which is your introduction. So just like what I made mention, there are details that has to be indicated in your introduction. So you have to provide a background about your research. Then you have to indicate in here your uh, literature reviews and studies so that uh, uh, there will be more information that would support your uh, topic that is subject for uh, investigation. So at the same time, do not forget the source. Always cite the source or the author where you derive that particular statement. It's not just a matter of copying, but make sure to do some sort of paraphrasing, okay? So always remember the minimum uh, literature that is expected is a uh, minimum of 25. Yeah? So uh, one uh, cited literature here, then another here, this is the way how you would write et al. Okay, so uh, Laguadur and Reposar 2020. In literature, it does not mean that you will, you will copy all details, okay? You have to get some statement that has a strong relevance that is related in your study. Of course, this is an avenue to support your problems. Okay, so aside from that, you also mentioned some other studies here. Okay. So always remember your citations. Then here, another source. And of course, another source here. So you have to remember, okay, that uh, it is very important that they have to be recognized. So this, this would be your introduction. You have to support it using literature review. That is why in IMRAD, you can no longer see chapter to as your literature review. It would just be posted and uh, compressed in your introduction. Okay, you would see in here. So if there are also relevant laws that is something to do with your research, you could indicate it. Okay. So you have to, since my scope or locale of the studies in Northwestern, pra practically and uh, specifically in College of Criminal Justice Education, I have to tell details about our colleagues. Uh, responsive, uh, particularly on the conduct of competency appraisal, and I would uh, indicate in there what is competency appraisal and at the same time its objectives and who are covered by the competency appraisal. So, yeah, you could see now. 
And uh, of course, telling something about the background of the college is important. So we are now, uh, we will now, we are now enjoying level three and aiming to be center of development. That is why we have to keep on improving or sustain quality education and at the same time, license your performance. And that is the very reason why competency appraisal has been established uh, for mastery, to improve academic performance, for you to improve uh, well your performance in licensure and for you to become employable. So now, these are now the reasons why I conducted this study. Okay, you would see on this part, uh, no evaluation has been made. So there is a need to study or assess now the competency appraisal to determine if it is properly implemented or it really attain its mandated objectives. So, yeah. And aside from that, in the introduction, you indicate also the relevance of the study and the contribution. So after the introduction, we now have the research framework. So if you happen to read some researches, it has something to do about theoretical framework. So it's just a matter of changing the names or label and it was then called as research framework. So you have to consider coming up with a theory or concept. Again, you still need to indicate the source and you have to give a detail or you, got, you give a discussion about the framework that you will be using and try to relate it with the present study. You have to relate it. How it would interplay with the problems posed in the study. Okay, so again, I always remind you to do paraphrasing. And then after that, you will now come up with your figure one. So the paradigm of your study. Since I have used IPO or input process output model, before the paradigm figure one, you have to explain first. You have to discuss what is all about your paradigm. So just like what I have in here, have this, the inputs are the profile, implementation of CA, the impact, and the problems encountered. And this will be processed through analysis and interpretation and for me to come up with an output. Kaya, it is IPO to establish some strategic recommendations to improve the implementation of the CA course. So this is my research paradigm. I'm telling you that if this is not perfect, okay? <laughs> so I'm not a, that, as good. Okay, so after that, you now proceed with research problem. So we have the major or the general problem. So it has something to do, it relates now to the title. And then afterwards, you have to come up also with your specific problem. So what are the specific problems that are very important to consider? So since uh, I am talking I am referring also to the graduates, then of course it is very important that we have to consider knowing their profile. Now that they are employed, their destination, and of course their eligibility. Since they took the licensure exam, okay, or NACOCOM or the civil service or other kinds of exam. So next is the level of implementation of the competency appraisal as two. So I just came up with these themes or sub uh, statements based on the program of uh, the competency appraisal and how they organize the activity pertaining to the competence of lecturers. And at the same time, we know that the faculty or the in charge of uh, CA are monitoring students, okay? and trying to determine also the assessment methods. You know, what are the assessment methods being provided by the course? Just like recitation, just like 
pre-test, post-test, diagnostic. So these are the assessment methods. And same as true, we will have to consider uh, how grading system is being implemented. Okay. So aside from that, number three is the impact. Okay. So since these are the targeted objectives of the CA, that is why I would determine now the impact. Uh, do you think that the CA has a strong impact in the academic performance of students? It isn't it that while having the competency appraisal, a student is, is still enrolled in some academic subject. So it may contribute to improve their academic performance. And aside from that, it would, do you think that there is also an impact to the criminology licensure examination? Does it help? For them to pass or to obtain a good rating and of course employment so i adopted the objective of the ca to determine if it really attained it has an impact the attainment of its objective then number four what are the problems encountered in the implementation of the competency appraisal is number four so uh, for me to know what are the problems encountered, why should I have to dig into this? That there's this could be an avenue for us to study what could then be the proper method or how could we address this? How could uh, what could then be the corrective actions to be undertaken to avoid problems to minimize the appearance of problems? And that is the reason why I will be coming up with strategic recommendations. Okay. So that is on the research problem. And after that, we now proceed with chapter two, which is methodology. So I'm just telling you class that in this chapter, make sure also to have an introductory part about chapter two. This, uh, just like for example, this chapter includes the methodologies or the manner or the manner how the study will be conducted, which includes research design, etc. You have to provide them here, okay? Then we start with research design. So this is a quantitative uh, research. So we will be using a descriptive method when design uh, quantity, quantitative number. So ang quantity is quantitative design, uh, specifically descriptive. And uh, of course, survey method will be conducted using a questionnaire. So in coming up with a proposal, make sure that it should be in future tense, it's not past tense. Because as I observed, some students are coming up proposal, up a proposal, and then they are already using past tense as if it is a finished research. Okay, that is a certain tip that I could give you. Para naman, hindi halata na kinupya mo lang yun, di ba? Okay, so will be... Okay. In this way, it will describe the profile of the respondents, how the CA course is implemented, determine its impact to the graduates and the problems in factor. So uh, quantitative, because I will be dealing with numbers. So unlike if it is qualitative, mga phenomenological, mga ganun yung kwan, di ba? Okay. So participants referring to the persons involved in this study, our respondents. So I will be considering here the graduates who undertake the CA. So for the last five years, because in CA we had started this in from 2016. Uh, we graduated in 2016, I think, but okay. So those who took the licensure exam and are employed. So that I could determine if there is really an impact of this CA to them. So from the total population of, I have not yet uh, uh, taken all the, taken the number. That's why I just leave it blank for, I mean, what, for the time, for this uh, time. And I will also be using some sort of computation to come up with a sample size. Okay. So in research instrument, Okay, this is now your survey questionnaire, your research uh, instrument tool, data gathering tool, okay? So what you can do in here, since it is a research survey, 
uh, it was made by the researcher, then it would be subjected to validation. Unless if I would have adopt another questionnaire, then it would just be, it would be better. Uh, even there will be no validation, that's okay, okay. And second part, you have to discuss here the different parts of the questionnaire, yes? And then validation, since it is a new questionnaire that I just prepared based on the problem. But uh, just like what I made mention on your part, the student, if you happen to adopt this, if you happen to adopt your questionnaire from another research, you just, you can say that it was adopted. But if you try to make some sort of changes, you improve it for you to suit it in your uh, problem statement, it is modified. So you indicate or recognize the author of that research. Okay. And data gathering procedure, observe protocol, especially if you are dealing with an agency or offices, you have to make sure to come up with a request letter for the conduct of study, okay? And uh, the plotting of questionnaires must be indicated. Uh, how will you plot it? Since it is pandemic, then we go online using Google Forms and don't forget the attachment of informed consent because these are part of ethical considerations. So uh, when we talk of, about the participants, make sure that they will voluntary, voluntarily participate. Do not force them. Then ethical considerations are placed in here. Okay, inform, the use of informed consent to obtain voluntary participation. You explain to them about the risk, the benefits. There should also be the observance of confidentiality, right to withdraw. And uh, of course, it is very important that their names must not be indicated. So do not indicate the names anymore in the profile or even in the questionnaire. Yes. And the, in the data analysis, the data to be gathered will be analyzed and interpreted. So you have to indicate now the statistical treatment that you will use is like frequency or percentage for the profile. These are just a very basic treatment. And weighted mean to determine the level of implementation and impact. So four point Likert scale will be provided. So you will now come up with the range of values and together with the verbal description or verbal interpretation, just like for example, four, three, two, one, very high, high, moderate. So these are just simple things that you could do. Okay, so after the data analysis, you are now ready to have your working bibliography, indicate the names, the year of publication, then the title. So just like this, so it should be hanging, okay? This should be the manner. And it must also be what? Alphabetically arranged. So you must have to make sure that all the references you indicated in your manuscript must be present in your bibliography. Because there are some students, they just indicate references in the bibliography or in the manuscript, but they are not placing them in the bibliography. And dami doon sa manuscript, pero sa references kunti. So please do not do that. Okay? Then the budgetary requirement, Anyway, just never mind this. This is just for faculty research, kaya I have this. And of course, do not forget to indicate your curriculum vitae in here, your CV, your PDS. But make sure that the picture you will indicate in your curriculum vitae must be neat and in order. I 
uh, do not indicate your mind. Sometimes yung mga self na hindi formal, please. Okay, so all of you must have to attach your curriculum. So I hope again that this uh, few sessions that we are having, you learned something and I had imparted knowledge for you to uh, become better and better in doing your research work. Okay, so thank you very much. I hope that you will be working effectively with your research, with all the efforts of your members. So I am so excited for your presentation and stand by and keep on reading more researches so that we will learn more and more. So thank you. Let's just have a fun while we learn, okay? So do not punish yourself with results. Thank you and have a good day. Keep safe, everyone.